wagon on the way up and back down this first time, make sure you give people that didn't ride the wagon a chance to ride the wagon, okay? You may have to walk up to you this time, okay? If you didn't ride the wagon, you make sure you get in line to ride the wagon, okay? All right? If you want to ride it, if you want to walk, you can walk, okay? Anybody that wants to walk can walk, all right? Anything else? We good? Good. All right. Hey, preacher's fixing to come, boys. Let's get serious, okay? Brother, you come on and do what the Lord have you do. Serious time. Everybody serious right now, just for a few minutes. I believe the quieter you'll be, the quicker you'll be. Amen. Y'all all right? Y'all glad to be Y'all glad to be here? I got something I want to do. Okay. Y'all see this verse? Matthew 5, 14. I have something I want to give you. If you can stand up where you are without looking at your Bible, without looking at your Bible, the first person that stands up and can quote that verse without looking at their Bible, I got something to give you. Can anybody do it? She got it. You may say, what in the world are you giving her? I told myself coming up the road, I stopped at ATM, got a $100 bill out. Said some of y'all, yes, some of y'all were jealous. Y'all stopped. I got a house. I told myself if I can quote that verse, I'm going to give him a $100 bill. And she's got it right here. So, here's your $100 bill. Next thing. I like having fun. I like having fun. I didn't drive all the way up here just to preach and go home. So we're going to do something. Get up on the stage, all three of you. All three of you. Darren said he wasn't going to do this. I'm making him. Bo, you come over here. Avery, you right there. You sitting right there in the middle. We're going to do a song. We've we done this at our Bible school. And we're going to let y'all do it. So everybody stand up. I'll preach here in a minute, maybe. All right. Y'all ain't got to do it the first time. I want you to watch these three knucklehead boys that are going to do something for y'all, then y'all are going to do it, all right? So y'all watch. Knock it. Go ahead. I ain't singing. Y'all got this. Nothing. Huh. All right, here's the thing. Yeah. Now it's y'all's turn. Yeah. All right. Y'all remember what they done? They're going to do it with you. Now it's y'all's turn. One, two, three. Three, knock it out, go. Don't kick nobody. Y'all can sit down. No, Avery, you stay up here. Y'all two sit down. I hope I'm okay. I hope y'all ain't mad. All right. Quiet. Quiet. Is it, am, am I all right? Is this okay? All right. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to have a competition. My left versus my right. Have y'all ever heard of hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah? Praise ye the Lord. See, all right, you're going to take that side, and I'm going to take this side. All right, so y'all stand up. Stand up with me. Do y'all know what y'all are doing? Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Yeah, have y'all done this before? So y'all know what y'all are doing. All right. Y'all ready? Sing it with me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, what I've done, I made sure to get everybody screaming out so y'all can't be loud the rest of the day. And your, vote, your voices are shot now. All right. All right. Okay. The fun time's over. Fun time's over. Time to get serious for just a few minutes. I'm not going to preach long. I'll say that, but I probably will. I want you to, if you have your Bible, come with me to 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17. All right, 1 Samuel 17. I know you're excited to be here, but I need everybody's undivided attention for just a little while. I know you are happy to be here, and I'm glad you're here. But I just want everybody's attention for just a few minutes. I promise you we'll get out of here and y'all can go play and uh, do whatever. See, he don't even want to be He just wants to play. But uh, anyway, I know y'all are, y'all, are, y'all are excited. But 1 Samuel 17, uh, I don't know how y'all normally do this, but let's stand one more time. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. And uh, I'll read a few verses to you, and uh, I'll, I'll share with you my heart, and uh, we'll go from there. First Samuel 17, if you find your place, say amen. amen. If, you, even if you ain't got a Bible, say amen. I'm just glad you're here. Amen. amen. First Samuel 17, look with me in verse number 31. It says, And when the words were heard which David spoke, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. A servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Verse number 33 says, And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to, to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. Let's pray, God our Heavenly Father. God, we thank you, God, for the joy. God, it is, God, to stand and preach your word. God, I know, Father, God, our, we're excited. God, we're, just, we're happy to be here. But God, just for a few minutes, God, I pray, God, that you'll just calm us down and we'll, we'll quit talking to one another and we'll just listen to the preaching. God, I pray, God, will make sense, Father God, and these kids can take it and apply it in their life. God, we just want to be a help to you, God. I know it's been fun and we're going to have more fun, but God, will take this time serious, Father, I pray. God, touch them. God, touch this place. God, touch the church. Father God, thank you, God, for, for the labor that they've done, God, to get this camp together. God, we love you. God, and we'll thank you, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. You can be seated. Thank you. All right, so here's, here's the deal. Here, here's what I'm preaching on. I'm just going to say this. I'm going to say this real quick. Y'all remember what John, I, is it Johnny, is that your name? Johnny said a few minutes ago, if you're talking, we're going to get an adult to come back here and sit with you. I'm not afraid to preach in front of you. I'll come back here and sit with you in your lap and preach beside of you if you, don't talk, if you keep talking. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not. But I just want everybody to listen to what I have to say. But 1 Samuel 17, I'm sure that if you've been in church any length of time, you understand what's taking place, place in 1 Samuel 17, David and Goliath. I can get to probably the youngest up here in this place all the way up to the oldest in here and can tell me what takes place in 1 Samuel 17. But I read in your hearing a verse that that's where my, my mind is going to come from. Is that's in verse number 33. It says, And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. And for just a few minutes, I know this title is going to sound funny. I promise I'm going to make sense to you for just a little while. I want to preach to you this this afternoon, this morning, whatever time it is, on victory over a veteran. Victory over a veteran. You may say, Preacher, what do you mean by that? You'll find in verse number 33, it says, For thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. So if you do your study, and if you you know anything about Goliath, Goliath was born in a place called Gath. And from the time that he was a a young knucklehead boy, as most of y'all are in here, he was raised to fight. That was his main goal in life, and that was what they were supposed to do back then, was they were just trained just whoop up on people. Let's just be honest with one another. Who, who likes to whoop up on their siblings every once in a while? 
But then what happens when you whoop up on them? You get in trouble. And he said, no, uh But anyway, but you find in this scripture that Goliath was a man that from the time that he was some of y'all's age, the only thing he knew what to do was to fight. And you'll find David in this scripture, if, you, if, I, if I'm right, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But if I've done my study, and he's from either from the age of about 12 all the way up to 16 years old. Who in here, reach, who, who's in that age frame from 12 to 16? I'm sure there's quite a bit of you in here. So you think about this. I'm going, I, I'm going straight to this man back here. Could you imagine, oh curly hair, going up against a dude that's nearly 10 foot tall? How tall are you? Do you know? Five three, so that's probably that's nearly five feet taller than what you are. So another person on top of you, your height, you 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 wouldn't know what to do. Half of y'all the same way, you wouldn't know what to do. But ain't you glad we got God on our side? Amen. Anyway, you'll find what I'm trying to get to you. You can go to let me go there. First Peter, chapter number five. I want to read this verse to you real quick, and uh, I, I hope this makes sense in just a few minutes, but. 1 Peter, you ain't got to turn there if you don't want to, but 1 Peter, I should have marked it, but 1 Peter, let me get there. Verse number, verse, 1 Peter 5, verse number 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So in, in my crazy mind, when 1 Peter 5, 8 was written, I, I'm not the smartest, I don't know when it was written, but if the devil was back then, preacher, walking around trying to seek people who he may devour, the same devil that was back then is doing it today. The same devil that was, was, was back in Jesus' times and back, when, when, back, in the, back in them days is the same God that's in our life today that's walking around trying to deceive us and tear us up. And that's what I'm going to try to do and bring out of 1 Samuel 17 on how we can get victory in this world as a young person, as somebody your age can get victory over the devil. You may say, preacher, I'm young. I don't, I don't face the devil. We all face him. We all face the devil on a day-to-day -day basis. It's called peer pressure. We all face peer pressure. We all face the world. We go, we, I'm not sure most every one of you in here probably go to school. If you don't, then it's good for you. You need, you need to go to school. But anyway, most of us, you're either homeschooled or public school. I've been to public school, and I know what y'all face on a day-to-day -day basis. It's called the devil, and the devil's trying to get in your mind. But honestly, I want to give you a few things that I hope that can be a help to you to face your devil, to face your Goliath, as David was, and get victory over him. All right? First, I want you to notice, uh, by way of introduction, real, real fast, you'll find that there's a problem that he's faced with. You might say, what's the problem? You'll find it in verse number 4 through 7. On when, we're, when we're brought to the attention of Goliath. You can go there. I'm, I'm just going to look at these verses for a few minutes. It says, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And it goes down all of them verses reading his armor that he had. And if I, if I, if I looked it up, most of his armor just on the top side of his body Weight only weighed up to 125, 130 pounds. So to me, that's heavy. I mean, I'm looking at some of y'all. Some of y'all probably not even 130 pounds. I could carry a, a two or three of you and still wouldn't get to 130 pounds. That's just a lot of weight. You'll find that there's a problem. He, he was a man back then that, that was just ready to fight. Not only do you find the problem, it was a physical problem, you'll find that he was a whole lot bigger than everybody else was. Can I say something to you? The devil is a whole lot bigger than who we are. The devil, he, he wants to do things in our life to deceive us and mess us up. It was a physical problem. It was a, it was a, it was a problem that he saw that he knew that Goliath was a, was a whole lot bigger than he was. But only do you find that it was a physical problem, you'll find it was a mental problem. He got in his head because you can go to verse number 42 of, 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 chapter, 20, of chapter 17, Verse number 42 says, And when the Philistine looked about and sought David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair conscience. So what he was saying is, he was getting in, into David's mind. He was saying, there's no way that you're going to get victory over me. You're too small. You're not smart enough. You're not built enough. You're not big enough to get victory over this. And that's how the devil is. He wants to get in our mind. You'll find the problem. 
then you, you can look, you find the promise. It says that, that, that God was on David's side when he fought the Philistine, and he was on the God's side when he fought that lion and that bear. He smote them. And then he said, that if he can do it for the lion, and if he can do it for the bear, he can do it against this Philistine. I'm just going to say this. I know this is youth camp, and I'm, I feel preachy right now, but I want somebody to listen to me and listen to me well. You may be going through the biggest storm of your life, and you may think that there's no way that God's going to bring you out of it. But I'm glad to know I serve a God that if he can do it in the past, if he can bring you through one storm, through one battle, he can do it again. I'm glad to know I serve a God that gives us multiple times that he's going to come to where we are and pick us up out of our muck and our mire and put us back where we need to be. So I don't know what you're facing. We serve a God that can bring you out of it. Heard somebody said if God can bring you to it, he can bring you through it. Amen. I'm glad nothing that we face catches God by surprise. I'm glad whatever we go through, God doesn't saw it. God, doesn't, God knows what we need. And I'm glad to know we serve a God, Avery, that's going to be right there with us. You'll find a promise. I'm glad there's many places in our Bible that promise us that when we're in our problem, he's going to be there too. You look at Daniel chapter number 3 of the three Hebrew boys. When they, when they realize that they're going to have to go by their self because they're trying to stay with God. But you know what you find in that fire there? You find somebody named, it was like the, the what, what was, what did it say? It was like the, 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 in, the imprint of the Holy Ghost. It was the Father, the, the, the Jesus Christ was in there with them. Can I say something to you? We're going to go through fire and we're going to go through problems, but I'm glad to know God's faithful. God's right there with us and we're not alone. How to say this, your friends right here may have your back. Your friends right here may think, oh, I'm your best friend. Whatever you go through, I'm going to stick right there with you. But when the rubber meets the road and the problems hit you hard, your friends ain't going to be there. No, they ain't going to be there to find you. These three knucklehead boys up here are probably the bestest friends to each other. I think they are. They act like they love each other. But I'm sure, I know the hearts of each one of these boys, if Bo's going through something, the other two are going to be on Bo's side, and so on and so forth. Can I say something to you? If you're a child of God, and you love God, and God saved you, we should look, lock arms together, and know that whenever your friend goes through a problem, and whenever your family goes through a problem, we need to lock arms together and go through it together. Because nobody should be left alone. Amen. Hey you'll find that there's a promise. I'm glad to know that we serve a God that when we have to go through things, I'll just say this, God did not save us just to sit on the side of the road, so to speak, and sit in the church pew for us not to go through battles. We serve a God that we're, as a Christian, we're going to suffer persecution. But I'm glad to know God's there with us, amen. You'll find there's a promise, then you'll find, then you'll find there's power. In verses number 45 through 47, I'm not going to read them for time's sake, but then you'll find prevailing. He got victory. But this is what I want to give to you. I have, let me make sure I'm getting my bearings together. I have five things that I want to give to you. I mean, I'm not really preaching hard, but I'm wore out from playing that nine square game. Anyway, I'm going to give you five things real quickly, real, real quickly. We're going to get out of here. It's 1230. I'll try to be done by one o'clock maybe. If I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm really not good with time. But anyway, firstly, point number one, for us to get victory, over the veteran, for us to get victory over our Goliath, or to get victory over whatever you're going through, and for us to get victory over the devil, we got to stay faithful to the Father. we got to stay faithful to the Father. You may say, preacher, what do you mean? Where, where do you find in this scripture? Look with me in verses number 12 through 16. 12 through 16, I promise you I'm moving on quickly. I, I don't want to keep us here too long. Verse number 12 says, And David was a son of, I'm not even going to try to make myself a failure, that, that whoever the, the Ide of Bethlehem Judah, and his name was Jesse. He's talking about who his daddy was. He had eight sons, and the man went among men uh, for an old man in the days of Saul. Watch this, watch the next few verses. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and fought and sought a battle, and the names of the three, the three sons that went to battle were, I'm not even going to try to say them names. I don't want to make y'all laugh at me. Jump down to verse number 14. It says, And David was the youngest son. He was the youngest. And the three eldest followed Saul. Watch verse number 16. It says, But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. 
You might say, what does them words, what in the world are you trying to say to us? All I'm trying to say, what I just read to you, Jesse, David's daddy, had four sons. The three eldest ones went with Saul to battle. What did David do? David went back. It says he went back and, uh, to his father's house and fed the sheep. You might say, preacher, what in the world are you trying to say? If we want God to bless us in our life, and if you want God to do great things in your life, you've got to be faithful. You may say, what do you mean by faithful? Faithful is, is doing what God wants you to do, basically. It's the same way at home. If you ain't faithful to your mom and dad, you know what you need? You need a belt whooping. I don't know where that came from, but it felt like it needed to be said. I'll get Johnny to take his belt off and whoop you. My belt, my ain't, I got my golf belt on, so it really ain't going to whoop nobody. But I'll take, I'll whoop anybody in here. I ain't going to have a belt. If you ain't faithful, you need a whooping. It's the same way as Christians. If you ain't faithful to God, you need a whooping. And I'm just, I'm just I feel preachy right here. And I'm not, I didn't come to be mean. I really didn't. I'll just say this. You know what's wrong with the world today is we've got too much, too many parents letting the kids run the house. I wouldn't be happy about that. I would not. If you're running your house, then that's something wrong with you. A mom and daddy deserves to run the house. And I'll just say this, if you think you're macho man and you think you run your mom and daddy's crib and run your mom and daddy's house, you're the one that needs a butt whooping. It says the Ten Commandments, honor thy mother and thy father. I don't know where this is coming from, but it's youth camp. I feel like, I feel like saying it. You need to honor your mom and daddy. You need to honor the preacher. You need to honor these all the, I, didn't, I don't mean older ones in here, the, the camp counselors. If you don't, you deserve to go behind the church and get your butt whooped, and you have to walk around with a sour tail. I'm this, this is what I'm trying to say. If you, if, God, if you want God to bless your life, if you want God to help you face your Goliath in this scripture, you've got to be faithful to him. If you draw close to him, he'll draw nigh to you. You've got to be faithful. I want to say this, I know who I'm preaching to, and it's easy, Brother Terry, to be faithful to church. I mean, it, you can be faithful, but still not be faithful. You may say, what in the world? Anybody can walk through them doors, sit on a church pew, and say, oh, I'm faithful to church. Anybody can do it. You can get the local, the, the, the alcoholic crowd in this, church, in this part of the community, I'm not trying to be mean, and they can sit here and say they've been to church. But when I say you can be faithful, walk through them doors and give all you've got to God, that's when you become faithful. Anybody. Y'all say, well, I'm faithful. I'm, the, I'm at teen camp. I'm at camp this week. But are you truly faithful? Is your mind too, too worried about the games that you have to do up there or, or the bouncy house or, or the water games later? But I'm just trying to get somebody's help this morning to let you know if you want God to bless your life and if you want God to do great and mighty things in the future, you've got to be faithful. Amen. Firstly, you've got to be faithful to the Father. Nextly, let's move on quickly. Some of y'all are giving me a sour look, so we're going to move on. You've got to, nextly, not only boys, you've got to be faithful to the Father, but you've got to desire deliverance. You may say, what? What? You've got to want it. You've got to want that. You may say, want what? You've got to want God to help you. God's not going to help nobody that don't want help. And you say, where, where do you get that out of the scripture? Look with me in verse number 37. Verse number 37. I, I, hope, I hope I'm helping somebody. You'll find that you've got to stay faithful to the Father. You've got to desire the God's deliverance. You'll find in verse number, starting at in verse number 34 down to verse number 36. I'm not going to read them for time's sake. I've done mentioned it. That, he, that he, he's facing a bear and a lion that took a lamb out of the flock. So what he does... In verse number 35, he took a stone, he went and smoked them and delivered it and got the lamb out of his mouth. He, he's, he's telling of what God done for him. But verse number 37, verse number 37 says, And David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver. I'm glad he was confident. It didn't say he might deliver me or I'm praying he'll deliver me. It says he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Can I say something to you? If you want God to, if you want God to kill your Goliath and if you want to get your Goliath gone, I'll just say it like this. You've got the desire that I want. 
You've got to want it. You've got to say, you know what, God? I'm tired of facing what I'm going through. I'm tired of facing these people at school. I'm tired of my family. I'm just going to preach there for a minute. I'm tired of my family running over me. I'm tired of being the only one in my household that desires the work of God in my life. Can I say something to you? We've got to want this thing. We've got to want God to help us. And then he will. If If we'll do our part, he'll do his. You'll find you've got to stay faithful to the Father. Then you've got to desire God's deliverance. And I want to skip my next point because I want to save it for last. Then you've got to st- you watch this, verse number 45. I'm messing myself up, but it'd be all right. You've got to, you've got to stay protected by the protector. You may say, what, what in the world do you mean? Watch verse number 45. It says, And then, and then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword. Now comest with me with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of armies of Israel whom thou hast defiled. You remember what I said? You've got to be protected by the protector. You may say, what, what does that have to do with that verse that you just read? He comes face to face with his Goliath. He looks at Goliath and says, you know what? You may have a sword. You may have a spear, and you may have a shield, and you may have a helmet. But you know what I got? I got God. Can I say something to you? I may preach here for a while. The world may have everything that they have, but can I say something to you? As long as we've got God, we can win any battle. You may say, preacher, you don't know that. Oh, I do know that. I'm nearly 20. I think I'm 24. I have to ask my wife when I'm preaching how old I am. I know that sounds bad. I'm 24, I think. I've been, in, I've been in church, son, for 24 years of my life. Eight months before. I've always, I always heard I, I had a drug problem. I was drugged to church. You, we've all heard that before. But anyway, my dad, my dad will be here Saturday preaching to you, so he'll come Saturday and clean up my mess. So, y'all supposed to laugh. Anyway, but I've been in this thing, Brother Terry, my whole life. Yeah, I'm sure y'all have been in this. I'm, I'm, y'all have been in church your whole life too, I'm sure. Yeah, that's, your, that's your kids, correct? And, you're, and your dad's a missionary. Your husband's a missionary. So y'all have been in this thing your whole life, and you've saw God do things in your life that you think there's no way that could be done. I'm standing here on, in these, I think they're blue shoes. I'm colorblind. I don't know what color they are. Gray, blue, blue, gray. I'm standing here in these gray pants. I know they're gray. And I can tell you this. If you just stay protected and stay around God and let God protect you and just stay faithful to God, God can do great and mighty things for you. The world, the world may tell you, I, I'm just going to get deep right here and just get, get where the rubber meet the road. The world may say, we've got everything that you need. We've got, we've got everything that you need to live your life. To so some people, the world does. But you know what? The things in this world, what's that word? They're going to fall apart. They're going to crumble. They're going to let you down. But you know what? We serve a God that's never going to let you down. Amen. Amen. You've got to stay protected. But then, here we go. Here we go. Lastly, I think. I don't really know. You'll find you've got to stay faithful to the Father. You've got to desire the deliverance in your life. You've got to stay protected by the protector. But then lastly, this is where I want to close. You've got to approve your armor. You've got to approve your armor. You may say, preacher, what do you mean by that? Okay, come with me real quickly. Real quickly. We're, we're going to move on. We're going to move on real quickly. Look with me in verse number 38. Verse number 38. I promise you we're, gonna, we're, we're about done. Hang in there with me. Verse 38 says, And Saul, and Saul armed David with his armor, and he put, on his, on, he put on a helmet of brass upon his head, and also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he is sued to go, he is assured to go. For, but, but watch this, for he had not approved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. Watch verse number 40. Verse number 40. And he took his staff into his hand, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in a, in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even his script, and he had a sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. What I just said, you've got to approve your armor. 
He put all what he'd done in the scripture, you can go back and look at it. He put somebody else's armor on. You got to think about this. I know this is going to sound funny. You think, let, let me find a, a little kid. I'm not going to, these three, these four little knucklehead boys right here. Could y'all imagine, I know this is going to sound funny. Could y'all imagine these four knucklehead boys in my shirt? Be funny. Just, just that, that, that knucklehead boy. Normally when I preach with him, I have a suit jacket on. And I bring a kid up here and put my jacket on him. And it's, I've done it to Avery. That's right. And I put my jacket on and it swallowed Avery. You may say, Preacher, what in the world are you trying to say? If, if I took my shirt off and put it on Tucker, that's your name, Tucker, and put my shirt on Tucker, that thing would swallow him whole. You know what he couldn't do? He wouldn't be able to move his arms. He wouldn't be able to use his body because that shirt has drowned it over him. You may say, Preacher, what in the world are you trying to say? There's too many people in our churches are trying to tell everybody else how they need to go against their armor. Uh, they need to, they're, they're trying to say, this is what I've done. This is what you need to do. I, I, I'm glad of that. I'm glad for advice. But can I say something to you? God's on our side, and God's going to tell me how to fight my battles. And so what he does, he takes off that armor, that look, because he's a 15, 12 to 16-year-old boy putting on some old, uh, older man's armor. So that armor didn't fit him well. He took it off. You know what David does? He goes to the brook. He goes down to the river. I meant to bring me some rock, but I'm a failure, and I didn't go to Walmart in time to get me some rock, and I was going to give every one of you in here a rock. And I'm glad I didn't because I was just going to get about 40 rock. 40, I was just, but there you are, there's a lot of you in here, and y'all been fighting over rocks. But if you want a rock, we got a parking lot full of rocks. So if you want a rock, you can go get you one later. But anyway, but he went, he went to that brook, he got down, he got down to that, in that water and started picking out him five rocks. Now, I know that it's going to sound crazy, but he, was, he, he bent down and said, because in your Bible, water is a representation of the Holy Spirit. So I think he, he knelt down, Brother Johnny, and was in that water and said, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I have no clue, young, as how we're going to fight our Goliath. But he goes, God, I need you to give me some direction. So he picks up one rock, picks up another, and another, and another. Out of nowhere, how many rocks does the Bible say he had? Five. You were close. Good try, though. I'll give you credit. If I had another fake $100 bill, I'd give it to you. But he picked up five smooth stones. I know this may be a tough question, but anybody in here know what five represents in our Bible? It represents grace. I'm just going to say this. I'm so glad for the grace of God. Amen. Amen. You'll find in that Bible, it says you picked up five what? Smooth stones. And I remember about a year ago, I was up, where was I? Close to Grandfather Mountain, up in that neck of the woods. I was playing golf, and I remember looking, and I looked down beside of me, and there's a creek that was running by the cart path. And I looked, the only reason that them rocks were smooth is because the water was constantly running over them rocks, and it made them smooth. You may say, Preacher, what in the world are you trying to say? The reason some of y'all are smooth and some of you are not because some of you have Holy Ghost on you. What I'm trying to say is some of y'all are born again. Some of y'all are saved. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean, but some of y'all have come to camp rocky, sharp, rough around the edges. You know why? Because the water... The Holy Ghost ain't running through you. But I think I know the hearts of these people. The games are fun. Nine square will wear you out. I know running up and down that hill will tire a man out. Uh, next year I'll rent a charter bus and bring it up here for you so y'all kids ain't going to run up and down that hill. But them games are fun. Oh, having these water games are fun. Eating's fun. But I'm just going to say this. I know the heart of Brother Terry and Johnny and all these other people. It does not matter if whatever the cost is, but if somebody would leave this property Saturday born again, born washed in the blood of the Lamb, the camp would be worth it. But if you leave the same way you came out of here, all rocky, tore out of place like you are, then camp is not even worth coming to. But I cannot say something to you. Well, I'm glad to know. I feel preaching now. We're right here around the good old river stream that you can come to and you can get gloriously born again. Amen. You may say, preacher, you don't know my past. 
You don't know what I've been going through. You don't know the. You don't know my family. You're exactly right. But I'm glad to know God saves a whosoever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm glad to know whatever you go through, whatever you're facing, whatever your past is like, and whatever your mom and daddy are like, God can still save you, and He can make you smooth. Hey man, I, I I don't know what I don't know what people I don't know who he's in here, but I know I've preached long enough and I've been in church long enough. A group of people that I'm preaching to, there's probably quite a bit of people in here that's not saved. So I'm just gonna say this: you need to be careful who you sit beside. You may be saved, you may be in church your whole life, but but the, the person around you, behind you, beside of you, in front of you, may not have that testimony. So if you've got to be careful of who you're sitting around. But you've got to prove your armor. Here's my here's here's really where I wanted to get to. Here's where I want to get to. I promise you, I, I'm getting out of here. I've took up way way too much time, and I know these boys they'll give me a hard time going home. You preached too long. I done got it coming up here, and I didn't even preach this morning. But anyway, I want you to I want I want to give you five quick little things. I promise you, I'm getting out of here. I want to give you five rocks. If you ain't listened to me, none in this message. If you, ain't, if you ain't cared of anything that I said, please, all you can do, listen to what I'm back to say to you, please. Five rocks. Rock number one that we need to have in our shepherd bag to fight our Goliath is a rock of courage. A rock of courage. You may say, what do you mean by a rock of courage? Look in verse number 28 to 29. I'm not going to read them, but verse number 29 says, And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Is they're not a cause. The reason that he's saying this, you go back and look at the verses before them. He went and was given, he was given bread and water to his brothers, and they and he saw them all in their in their in their ditches, and they were scared to death because of who they were facing. They were they were scared. They didn't want to fight this man because he was so big. He, he was a man of war, and nobody wanted to fight Goliath. But David, he strutted himself up there like a big old cool man he like he was and said, y'all are, y'all are a bunch of wimps. Y'all are a bunch of sissies. Y'all need to get out there and fight because there is a cause. Can I say something to you? There's a bunch of people in our churches today, they run away from their Goliath. They run away from their Goliath. But can I say something to you? To a group of how many, how many kids there is in here, you've got to have enough courage in your life to know that when everybody else don't want to face their Goliath, when everybody else don't want to do nothing for God, you've got to have enough courage inside of you if the Goliath that you're facing is going to get defeated you've got to be the one to do it and you've got to have some courage amen you've got to have courage you can go to school when do y'all go back to school up here oh bless y'all's heart that's not far from now I think we go back well October (laughs) no I'm kidding no it's it's late late August but uh but what I'm trying to say is when you go back to school, I would say this, it's easy to serve God during the summertime. You may say, how in the world? What do you mean by that? It's easy to serve God when you're away from your peers at school. It's easy to serve God when you're at camp. It's easy to serve God when you go to Bible school. It's easy to serve God when you're all the time doing something with your church in the summertime. Am I right? But when you go back to school and next week it feels like August the 5th, that's when the rubber is going to meet the road. That's when the courage that you, I'm trying to preach to you, that's when you've got to have that rock of courage in your pocket when they're telling them dirty jokes and we're telling what they've done in the summertime. You've got to have enough courage in your, in your mind to say, you know what, you've done that, but I spent nearly a week on the side of a mountain at youth camp listening to preachers preach their heart out to me. Can I say something to you? You've got to have courage to fight your Goliath. Amen. Amen. You've got to have some courage. Nextly, you've got to have a rock of commitment. Verse number 33 through 37. I've done talked about that I'm, I'm relapsing, but you've got to be committed. If God can do it once, God can do it again. Amen. Help me out, somebody. You've got to stay committed. You've got to commit your ways unto God. I'll say this. Who in here plays sports? Raise your hand if you play sports. All right. Put your hands down. When you're on that baseball team, football team, basketball team, soccer, whatever y'all do, what do y'all do? You've got to stay committed to that team. 
because it's your duty to fill your spot, your position, and you know inside of your soul, in, in your heart, knowing, I've got to stay on that team if I want playing time. I've got to stay on this team because I'm a vital asset to that team. If it, I'm, not te- I'm not saying y'all to blow your heads up. If it wasn't for me, they wouldn't have anybody on that team. That's not what I'm saying. It takes a certain number of people to be on a team. But if one person is not staying committed like everybody else is, it's going to mess everybody else up. If you can stay committed, I'll just say this. I don't know if anybody in here plays summer baseball. I don't know. If you can, I'll just say this. If you can be committed to playing in a thousand degree outside on a, in the middle of July, you can stay committed to serving God in a gray air conditioned building. Hey man, I have a, I have a problem if you like to stay outside for 12 hours and watch people play baseball. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. It's just something I don't like doing. I don't like heat. But if you can stay committed to playing sports, you can stay committed to God. Amen? Nextly, next I'm moving on. Some of y'all are tired and restless. So we're going to move on. You've got to have a rock of courage. You've got to have a rock of commitment. Then you've got to have a rock of confidence. 45 through 47, it says, And David said to the Philistine, They're coming to me with a sword and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of the armies of Israel that hast thou defiled. And this day will the Lord deliver me in my hands. I will smoke thee and take thy hand from thee, take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. And on this day may know, this earth may know that there is a God in Israel. What I just read to you sounded terrible. If you, if you listen to me and if you're running along with me in your Bible, what he says, I'm going to cut your head off. I'm going to give your carcass to the wild beast and to the fowls of there. That's what he's doing. But in verse number 47, I think, verse number 45, I done said it. He was confident in knowing. You have the shield. You have all that. But I come to thee in the name of the Father. I come in the name of Jesus. Can I say something to you? If we've got Jesus on our side, we've got all the confidence in the world that we need to know that we're going to get victory. Amen. You've got to have a rock of confidence. I think I'm about done. But in verse number 48 through 50, you'll find there's a rock of conquering. That word conquering means victory, overcoming. Can I say something to you? I'm glad to know when we've got God on our side, we can get our rock and our sling and sling that thing around and smoke the, de- the Goliath in the head and he dies. Can I say something to you? Somebody in this church this morning, this afternoon, need to smoke the devil in the head. And then, lastly, lastly, you have the rock of conquering. Where'd she go? Can you come to the piano? I know you're taking notes, but can you come to the piano, please? You'll find the rock of celebration. The rock of celebration. If you're going with me, if, you, if, you, if you're in your Bible, I, I, you, can, you can write these verses down, but I'm not going to read them. Verses number 51 through 54. After he conquers, day, after he conquers Goliath, he takes the head of Goliath. He cuts that joker's head off. Takes his head. This is weird to me. I, this is something I wouldn't do, but back then they're different. He takes that. You can just play whenever you're ready. You, it, it, I, you'll help me slow down. You'll find that he took that head. I know this is going to sound funny. I'm going to take this as, a, as an illustration. This is Goliath's head. He takes that thing and sets it up because it says in his Bible he took it and put it in his tent. You may say, preacher, what in the world did he do that for? To give him confidence every time. I know this is going to sound weird. Every time he walks by Goliath's head, and he sees that thing, it brings back of what God done for him already. Can I say something to you? I'm not saying physically cut nobody's head off, boys. I am not saying that. Don't, don't go out here and cut off somebody's head and be weird and let it sit at your house. That is not what I'm meaning. But when we get victory... When you desire the victory in your life and you desire God to do great and mighty things in your life and God gives you that victory. You can go to Joshua, the children of, uh, you can go and they had a rock, they had that memorial rock. That rock was to show them of what God done for them. I'm glad to know, it it may not even be a a head of a monster, of Goliath. It may just be something so small you can put in your mind and say, you know what? You can look back and celebrate knowing God done it. God brought you through your battle and you got victory over your problem. Can I say something to you? You don't have to show a raise of hands, but everyone in here, Johnny, goes through things. We all face life 
Y'all live in the same world that I do even though I'm about two and a half, three hours away. Y'all face the same devil I do in Yakin County, North Carolina. And I'll just say this, I'll say this everywhere I go. If you don't face, face a devil, if you don't face, I'll just say this, a devil is not going to fight. He ain't going to try to whoop up on a lost person. He's not. But I'm preaching to Christians it's for just a few minutes. If the devil don't whoop up on you, you've got something wrong. Because he don't want to see nobody live for God. And if, you, and if you go through your life and it's sunshine, rainbows, lollipops, and popsicles, teach me how. Because as a 24-year-old boy, man, young man, whatever you want to call me, I face things on a day-to-day basis. And my problems, John, it may not be like your problems. And my problems may not be like your problems. But can I say something to you? The same God that helps me in my problem, Tennessee volunteer young man, he can do it for you. The same God, Johnny, that does great and mighty things for me, I know he can do it for you. And you may not even be listening to anything that I have to say. Can I, can I say something to you? It may be just a simple problem. Or you may have something going on in your family. I hope I'm, I hope I'm all right. And you may have something going on just in life in general that you need God to conquer. God can do it. you just got to desire it. But here we go, here we go. But, we're going back to the rock. If you ain't smooth, I ain't preaching to y'all. I know y'all know y'all. If, you ain't, if, you ain't, if you're lost, as lost could be, God's wanting to save you. God's wanting to do, the, God done done the hard part. He died on a cross. Y'all got to help me. He died on a cross for our sin alone. Hey man, you may think, preacher, I don't deserve God. None of us do. None of us deserve being in the family of God. Amen? But God's willing to convict your heart and draw you to an altar of salvation and get born again. I'm not pushing nothing. I'm not trying to draw you to come just to, to make you. But if God has dealt strong with your heart today and you need to get born again, when I say every head bowed, every eye closed, you come. But if you need to get saved, you come. But to the child of God, if you got something going on, and it's easy to cover up our problem around friends, but if you got something deep down inside of your heart, if you got a Goliath that you need God to conquer, bring it to Him. Bring it to Him. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let's stand. If God's dealt with you to come and pray, you come and pray. But that's just my heart. If you need to come and pray, the altar's open. If you if you have a need that you need God to bless you with, come. If God told you that you need to come and get saved, come get saved. If God's brought you to altar salvation, you come. But I'm glad to know this morning that God's willing to fix our problem for us. Amen. As you're coming, every head bowed, every eye closed. God, our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. God, for the joy, God, this is God to stand and preach your word. God, I know, God, it may have been longer than we anticipated, but God, I hope, God, that the message got across, across plainly and you can help these people. God, I pray you help them. God, the ones that's come, God, the ones that's praying in their seat, God, help them in their life to know, God, that you can easily, God, conquer our Goliath just like you did for David. God, we're glad to know that we serve a God that's willing and able, but God, we've got to want him. God, we'll take what we have in our shepherd's bag and fight our, fight our problems as we go through life for you. God, we love you. God, we'll thank you. God, it's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.
second. We're going to dismiss here just a second. If you, uh, if you didn't get to ride the wagon already, go ahead and line up in a few minutes at the wagon. Listen, if you're not, if you're going to walk, I don't want you up on top of the hill, way in the gravel, okay? Way in the gravel. We're going to go from here. We're going to go to the pavilion again. That's where we're going to go right now. Then we'll eat lunch. Then we'll have games and stuff afterwards. But listen to me, serious. Serious just a second, okay? Everybody listening? Serious just a second. If you're lost, and you know you're not saved, and you want to talk to somebody, we'll hang around a little bit. You just come to one of us, one of these grown-ups. Luke will be here, but he'll hang around a few minutes. If you want to need to pray, we'll pray with you, okay? Don't leave here lost. Don't leave here this service lost. Don't leave this place lost. God's waiting for you. All you got to do is ask him, okay? But if you need to pray, somebody will pray with you, okay? So don't leave. Just hang around a few minutes. And get, get with somebody, we'll pray with you, okay? All right? Go to the pavilion and sit down, okay? And we'll be there in just a few minutes. Everybody will be there in just a few minutes, and we'll get all that straightened out, all right? No, if nobody's going to start eating until everybody sits down. We're going to bless the food up there, okay? So uh, don't wait just a minute, boys. If you're going to walk out here on the gravel, if you're going to ride the wagon, go to the wagon, okay? But if you rode the wagon,